Hello and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. Before we start, if you want to join me on my live streams or get all your news in one video, check out um, Good Free Photos channel. I'm streaming on that channel as my backup. And I'm also having uh, Crypto Daily Updates as my uh, channel where I'm getting like basically all the today's news in one single video. So check those um, things out in the description and in the comments. And also please follow me on Twitter if anything, because YouTube's like randomly striking YouTube channels. Um, with their bots. So if anything happens to this channel, I will let you guys know on Twitter. So let's actually get on today's topic, which is DeFi. Now DeFi has been getting a lot of hoopla and a lot of hype, but I'm not investing in DeFi right now because several of the recent happenings, obviously there's the Ethereum chain link debacle because Ethereum can't scale. So like, you know, the chain link nodes shut down because they were costing too much. That was a huge debacle in my opinion. And that shouldn't have happened. There was the uh, twenty-five million dollar DeFi hack that recently happened, and that definitely should have shouldn't have happened. Regardless of the twenty-five million dollars got um, returned, that doesn't give me a lot of confidence. And there's been several other DeFi hacks lately, which does not give me too much uh, confidence in DeFi right now. But I do think DeFi has a good future. But I will only invest in the DeFi industry if it actually has these things, and they need to implement these things. One is definitely regulation, and that goes with both auditors. And like technical people, you need someone to actually look over the code. And if they find errors within the code, like, you know, GitHub did with the Lynn.me thing, they need some like auditors and uh, regulators to make sure that DeFi platforms actually fix it, not just ignore it. They need to freaking fix it because the recent exploit was actually known for about seven months in advance and they didn't bother to fix the damn thing. That is not acceptable for me to invest some money in. So they need definitely some regulations. I know that since it's decentralized, a lot of you are going to be like, oh, I don't want regulations because that's centralized. Well, screw that because I don't want to lose my money. Like the thing is, I rather have like some kind of authority to go regulate, to regulate a decentralized kind of like uh, area rather than just have like everything completely decentralized and then just have all these errors and bugs and all these hacks and scams going on because that's exactly what's going to happen um that's exactly what's going to happen to DeFi if you don't have any central kind of regulation now it doesn't need to be centrally con uh, controlled but you do need a regulatory body or authority to actually monitor this stuff you might think like oh but banks have you know like much bigger hacks in terms of monetary value that, that, that's because banks run like the entire world basically and DeFi and crypto is only a small part. As you grow, you will become a more and more attractive target for hackers and scammers. And you need something to someone to regulate that space because you know, like, yes, banks do have like hacks and scams, but you hear about those maybe like once every six months, once every year, maybe even once every two years. I hear about like DeFi hacks and scams like every two weeks. That's just not acceptable and it's not on the same scale. And there's no way in hell it's gonna go mainstream if like you don't actually fix that. And that is a big problem. It needs a lot of regulation. It needs some kind of regulatory body and auditing body to actually track these things. The companies themselves can be decentralized and they can run on a decentralized network, but you, you do need an overall auditing or tracking body. And that's one of the main things. And that's one of the first things. Like, you know, you could, like I said, the thing is like right now, you're not even seeing the beginning of these hacks because DeFi is still fairly low in value. And it might not be worth the trouble for many people to hack, but if it grows, that's going to be different. It's kind of like claiming that Mac has no vulnerabilities back in like 1990. That's, that's not true. Mac had plenty of vulnerabilities. It's just that no one bothered to exploit them because no one actually used Mac, you know, in the nineties. Once people actually started using Mac, a lot of like hacks, viruses, malware, um, both on iOS and on Mac actually came through because people actually started paying attention. So that's going to be the same for DeFi. If it tries to grow as big as like regular banking, the, ha the hacks and scams are going to go through the roof if there's no regulation. So regulation and auditing is the first thing. The second thing is definitely insurance. I mean, hell dude, like I want some insurance for my money. I don't care if the Fed or the banks are centralized. They FDIC insure my money. If your DeFi doesn't insure my money at all, and like just saying nice things doesn't mean crap because we saw what happened with MakerDAO. Like they basically liquidated a lot of people's entire positions because it went down so much in one day. That's completely unacceptable. There needs to be like regulation, but there also needs to be insurance in the industry. I want my money insured regardless if it's traditional banking or DeFi. I don't care if you have to have like a giant pool of money to sub to actually like insure your users. You need insurance. Otherwise, me and a lot of other people are probably not going to be interested in it. And you also need like, you basically need just, you need more backups and you need more code checkers. Cause I mean, it's just like for regulatory and auditors, that's one thing, but you need like code checkers as a part of the auditing team. 
because obviously a lot of the DeFi code I think is just written in scramble code because from what I've seen, it kind of sucks. And you actually need like uh, standards and like coding and stuff and good coding practices and people to audit and check those coding practices to make sure that your code doesn't completely suck. And they, you also need someone to actually regulate the ERC standard as well. Because ERC 777, they say it has more vulnerabilities. They need someone to go check that and like patch those vulnerabilities. So you need like a quick response team for all this stuff, a quick response technical team. You need auditors and regulators and you need insurance. If you have those three things, I will be much more interested. And I think not just me, a lot more other people will be much more interested in investing in DeFi. But right now it doesn't seem like you have any of those things. So I think it's kind of like foolhardy for actually me to invest in DeFi right now, because without those things, you're going to have like hacks and scams every two weeks. And I'm not interested in uh, investing in an industry that's going to have hacks and scams every freaking two weeks. So that's my episode for today. Let me know if you agree, like, and subscribe and hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.